Hello, John Rhodes here and welcome back. Big hello to all my subscribers and a warm welcome to the Foundation Dentists joining us from the Winchester Endo Study Day. If you've only just stumbled on the channel and you enjoy looking at endo cases, then stay tuned and don't forget to hit the little button and subscribe because there's many more in the pipeline. In this video presentation, I'm looking at the root treatment of a maxillary second molar. It's a moderately difficult case, but I've stripped it right back to the basics. So we'll be looking at preoperative assessment of the radiograph to see what challenges lie ahead. Access cavity preparation, a very simple preparation technique using two or three instruments. Irrigation and GP pumping to distribute the irrigant around the root canal system. We'll then obturate with a single cone GP and bioceramic sealer, followed by restoration with composite. I hope you enjoy it. Here you can see the preoperative radiograph of the maxillary left second molar. The tooth had been symptomatic and the patient had presented to their dentist with toothache. On the radiograph you can see a periapical radiolucency. This indicates that the tooth is highly likely to be necrotic and the root canals undoubtedly infected. At the tip of the distobuccal root there appears to be an abrupt curvature and we need to bear this in mind when preparing the root canals. There is a pulp horn in the mesial aspect of the pulp chamber and this is quite close to the base of the amalgam restoration. Perhaps this is a route via which bacteria entered the root canal system by microleakage. The mesiobuccal canal appears to be moderately curved, however we always have to bear in mind that there are often very acute curvatures in the buccopalatal or buccolingual plane that you cannot see on a radiograph. The tooth was restored with a poorly finished amalgam restoration and this was removed prior to gaining access to the pulp chamber. You can see that I've isolated two teeth and this will make restoration after root canal treatment much easier. I won't need to remove the dam. I'm using an LN burr and a StarTex 3 ultrasonic tip to refine my access cavity. I've now got good visibility of the pulp floor and I can see the orifices of all the root canals. The first stage of preparation involves coronal flaring. This removes any obstructions at the level of the orifice. In this case I'm using a ProTaper SX instrument but you could use a Gates Glidden Burr or a rotary or a reciprocating instrument. You can see that I'm using this instrument with a light brushing action into the bulkiest part of the root. It's important to flush away any debris with hypochlorite solution and use a patency file just to check that you're not blocking the canals. It's now time to estimate the working lengths of the root canals and establish a glide path. I'm doing this with a size 10 flexophile. I'm using a watch winding action and an electronic apex locator to confirm the working length. And then I'm using a light small amplitude filing action to really create a reproducible glide path. Having created a glide path in all the root canals, it's now time to rapidly taper them. Any rotary or reciprocating nickel titanium file system will do this very efficiently and safely. In this case, I use the Wave 1 Gold system, using three files per canal. The buccal canals were all prepared to a primary instrument and the palatal canal to a medium. 
It's tempting to let the instrument run all the way to the working length in one hit, but this isn't really advisable. There's a lot of dentine mud being created and it's probably better to do it in stages to avoid extrusion of infected material and then a potential flare up. I'm now checking the lengths of the prepared root canals by taking a cone fit radiograph. You can see that the cones haven't gone quite to length and so I'm going to go back in with my size 10 hand file as a patency file with copious 3% sodium hypochlorite irrigation. I would also use the finishing file one more time just to make sure that everything was prepared to the correct length. And now the key to successful endodontics, sodium hypochlorite. Here I'm using a 3% solution in a safe ended needle that has been pre-bent short of the working length. These are all measures to avoid extrusion of irrigant. GP pumping using a master cone is an effective way of agitating the irrigant in the root canals. I'm now drying the root canals. Don't forget you must always use sterile paper points. If you look carefully, you can see that I've placed some PTFE tape measly. There was a little bleed in the gingiva and this is an excellent way of stemming any bleeding. In this case, I'm going to use a very simple single cone and bioceramic sealer technique to obturate the root canals. I used BioRoot RCS and I like to inject the material into the coronal part of the root canals before placing the GP cone, as I've found this to be less messy. The pre-measured master cones are then inserted through the sealer to the full working length, seared at the level of the pulp floor and plugged with a Mac 2 plugger. Excess sealer in the pulp chamber can be removed with a 3-in-1 syringe and water spray. I'm now restoring the cavity with composite. I've flipped the microscope onto the yellow filter so that it doesn't affect the setting of the composite. I've placed a paladent matrix with wedges and a separator to ensure really good contact between the mesial cavity of the upper left seven and the distal part of the molar in front. After full etch and placement of bonding agent, I'm now bulk filling the majority of the cavity with a flowable composite called SDR. The occlusal anatomy is then built up in the standard way using light cured composite. Here you can see the finished composite with the matrix still in place. I've now removed the matrix and carried out some polishing. Time to check the contacts before taking a final periapical radiograph. This tooth probably won't need to be crowned. 
The final radiograph shows excellent coronal apical seal and you can see that the sealer has been carried all the way down to the apex and has puffed through some lateral anatomy at the apical part of the root canals. Well, I do hope you enjoyed that presentation. Don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, because there are many more interesting cases in the pipeline. And above all, enjoy your endo.